Fresh on the scene in the electric vehicle landscape is Fisker, which just unveiled its Fisker Ocean EV. And here now with all the details is the company's founder and CEO, Henrik Fisker. Thanks for joining me today, Henrik. It's great to be here. Good to see you. So congrats on the unveiling of the ocean. It looks like it has a lot of bells and whistles, which we will chat about here in a minute. But first, I mean, the electric vehicle landscape is so competitive right now. You have every established automaker getting into EVs. You, of course, have Tesla, several Chinese EV makers, and other startups like Rivian and Lucid. So as a consumer, if I'm in the market to buy an electric vehicle with all the options out there, why Fisker? Well, you know, we took a completely different path, specifically of any of the other startups, but even some of the traditional car makers. You know, most of the, the new EVs that are coming out are 80 to 100 to 150 thousand dollars, and we went in for a much more affordable segment. Our vehicle starts at 37 thousand 499 dollars, so I think that's a, a totally different type of price range that we, you can't really compare us together with some of those other super expensive EVs. And despite this price range, we have managed to be class leading with several elements in the vehicle. So for example, our mid uh, package, which is called the Fisker Ocean Ultra, costs $49,999. And it's got a class leading range of 340 miles. That's longer than any EV on the planet uh, under $50,000. And our top version will have over 350 mile range for 68,000, again, uh, any other SUV or crossover in, in compared to our vehicle cannot beat that range. So I think that's a huge differentiator already. And then of course we got our rotating screen, which we debuted, which we have filed a patent on a 17.1 inch screen, which rotates. So a lot of exciting stuff in this vehicle that nobody else have. And Tesla, clearly the first mover in this space. What have you learned from maybe the, the success that, that they've had uh, and things that consumers like about what they're offering, but also mistakes that they've made and things that you believe, again, set Fisker apart in that EV landscape? Well, you know, I think we, we have a clear vision about what we want to do. We're not really here to go out and copy somebody else. And we, we don't really see any particular one car maker as a competitor. Uh, you know, the more people we can get out of gasoline cars and into electric cars, uh, the happier we are, because at the end of the day, our vision is a clean future for all. And, uh, you know, what we see as what consumers really are looking for, in my opinion, is uh, fully connected vehicles over-the-air updates, large screen, simple to use. We have taken a whole new step to was the user interface. We do have a, a giant screen in the vehicle, but by actually being able to rotate it, we offer kind of what you're doing with your phone. You either use your phone in portrait mode when you're right on it, and that's kind of when you're driving, or if you watch a movie, you turn your phone, and our screen, you push a button, and it just rotates to what we call Hollywood mode, where you can watch movies or play games. We have a whole new user interface that we haven't shown yet, but it's going to be super easy to use. We also have a floating button panel. So I think one of the lessons learned with big screens is that there's a few functions that really are not easy to use on a screen when you're driving. For example, quickly move the air condition up or down or the fan speed. So we have a little button panel that is floating under the screen. So even when the screen turns, the panel stays. It's a really cool feature. And I think that makes our vehicle uh, different and much easier to use than if you just have a screen. Uh, and then of course, I think range is important. We have, we have seen that people do like for safety, for feeling safe to have a long range. And that's why we aim to have the longest range in our price segment uh, and our type of vehicle. And then finally, people like speed. So, you know, we got four wheel drive, we got a top 550 horsepower, zero to 16, 3.6 seconds, 3 .6 seconds. That's sort of things that you would only see in a Ferrari a few years ago. Uh, and be able to bring that to normal people, I think is super exciting. And now switching gears here for a second to talk about this from an investor standpoint. Let's chat about Fisker's business model, no dealerships or service centers, no manufacturing facilities. So you're a very lean and agile company. Yeah, you know, we decided to create this super asset light model because our aim was to bring out cool electric vehicles for an affordable price, best in class price. And we, we understood that we have to be lean to be able to take these thousands of dollars off the price of a vehicle that every other car manufacturer have to put on top of their price 
because they have to pay for running all these factories, electricity and people sitting around and service centers. So we decided to go the opposite way, kind of what you're seeing what's happening in other areas of retail, uh, where you go direct to consumer, you don't have all these middlemen. And for service, we'll just pick up the car uh, when, when you need service, you want to make it hassle free. We have also created, uh, and we obviously have service partners that service the vehicles. We also have created a flexible lease. We think a lot of young people don't want to sign up for a three or four year lease. So we have a flexible lease that starts at $379 a month uh, with a down payment. And then you can get the car back anytime. You can keep it for three months, six months, a year, whatever you feel like, and we take care of everything. Now, do you think there's any downside to having to rely on suppliers in that manufacturing process, especially in the current environment with supply chain issues that we've seen across the board in uh, every industry, basically? So I actually think the opposite. So we are the only EV car company, as far as I know, that hasn't announced a delay in our manufacturing. We're still on schedule to start manufacturing next year, uh, start of start of production in November next year. We're actually starting building prototypes already in end of March next year, two, two vehicles a day. Uh, that's something you can only do when you have a, a very experienced contract manufacturer like Magna, which already have a setup, which already have all the skilled labor, they're already building premium vehicles. So we don't see that as any shape or form being negative. We actually see that as being a positive to be able to ramp up uh, manufacturing a lot faster than probably anybody can do if they built their own factory and never manufactured a car before. Mm -hmm. And so speaking of that ramp up, uh, let's talk about that a little bit, because in the car industry, there's a big focus on those you know, monthly or quarterly delivery numbers and, and being on target or being ahead of schedule. And it sounds like uh, from what I heard in your presentation, you're planning on being ahead of schedule. But what are you thinking about it? You know, there's so many moving parts uh, in making a car. How do you make sure that you are delivering what you need to be delivering when you, you have plan to, follow, to deliver? You have to follow strict processes. We have purchasing meetings, supply chain meetings, and manufacturing meetings every single day. Uh, I'm joining in a lot of these meetings. We make fast decisions. Uh, we have worked with our suppliers to create a much faster development process. So this is something that there is a lot of, of puzzles and that has to be or pieces that have to come together for this puzzle to come together. But, you know, we have an incredibly experienced engineering team. We have a super experienced a manufacturing partner. Uh, and so far we can see we're on time. And like I mentioned in my presentation, I wouldn't be surprised if we can deliver actually a few vehicles even before startup production, because as I mentioned, we actually start making two vehicles a day already in the March next year. And, and that's pretty significant. So we'll have quite a few vehicles made even before we have the official startup production. And so with the three tiers of the Fisker Ocean that you're offering, what's your anticipated breakdown uh, ultimately uh, once you know, the, the supply and demand uh, situation you know, is a little less uh, you know, pressure on that? What do you anticipate being the breakdown of you know, the more accessible pricing versus those higher tiers? So we, of course, have an internal breakdown. I think that like any vehicle you launch in the beginning, uh, you, you are going to have a lot of uh, uh, requests for the high-end vehicle. The 68,000 fully loaded vehicle is the most fun. It's got solar panels. It's got California mode, you know, all that stuff. And then, of course, I think uh, eventually you're going to see our $50,000, $49,000 vehicle probably being the highest seller because it's got four-wheel drive. It's got all the power. It's really well-priced. I think the base vehicle, the sport, uh, eventually will also pick up quite a lot because I think it can interest a lot of people who's today driving a pretty mundane, basic gasoline car that they're paid maybe thirty-five to forty thousand dollars for, and they suddenly realize, wow, I can get such an exciting electric vehicle for the same price. So I think we'll have a big market advantage, and I wouldn't be surprised if we can go beyond our anticipated volumes that we have planned so far. And battery technology, another hot topic in the industry. What sets Fisker apart there with the battery technology? And how are you aiming to continually to improve your battery technology? So one of the advantages we have with our super fast development uh, timing is that we were able to choose the latest technology this year. So normally when you buy a car, 
today, that technology is probably already three years old because it was decided three years ago. In this case, when you get our car next year, it's really a new technology and that, that is across the vehicle. When it comes to the batteries, we just announced that we have signed a deal for uh, a long-term uh, for delivery and securing battery cells from CHL, uh, world's largest battery company. We chose two different battery uh, packs and two different battery chemistries. One is, is low cost, which is now base vehicle, is why we can sell this vehicle for this great price of 37,000. And then of course we have some super high density uh, uh, cells for the for the top vehicles. But what we did was we also worked very closely with CHL to create what I think is one of the most energy dense battery packs. And that is more to do with how you, you uh, package the cells, how you cool them. And then of course you got the battery management system, which we also work on. So all these things together with a very sophisticated powertrain with silicon carbide inverters and torque vectoring, you know, all these things together gives us this range uh, advantage. Uh, and, and remember, this is an SUV. This is not you know, a soap bar hatchback that is easier to make uh, very aerodynamic. In the end of the day, an SUV is not that aerodynamic compared to you know, hatchbacks. So, uh, but you still have the longest range. So you can imagine we had to spend a lot of effort in getting as much power as we could into this vehicle, into the battery pack. Henrik, thanks so much for your time today and best of luck to you and Fisker. Thank you. And make sure you check out investors.com slash investing strategies for more executive interviews. For Investors Business Daily, I'm Alyssa Corum. Hi there. Thanks so much for watching Investing Strategies on our YouTube channel. If you want more executive interviews and analysis of key trends to watch, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date.